What's going on everyone? Today is a super exciting video. We got a lot of new goodies and I'm gonna kinda do a uh, mail day. We got something cool in from Ultra U, we got something really cool in from Matthews, and we got something cool in from Black Rifle Coffee. We have our monthly subscription coffee, always A plus artwork and A plus coffee coming from Black Rifle Coffee. It's always my go-to, literally. I literally drink a cup of coffee and some sort of energy to drink every single day. My veins flow with caffeine. Anyways, we have a package also from Ultraview. This was, I actually, I actually bought these. I bought these limited editions from Ultraview because I was like, yo, Colby, I need these limited editions. Um, and you guys will not be able to buy these anymore because that was a limited edition, an all black Ultra View. Look how hot that is. All black Ultra View. But, you know, snoozy lose, I suppose. None of you guys that are watching this video right now can watch this. Um, a lot of exciting things are going on. We got turkey season coming up, we have um, ASAs coming up, we have Redding coming up, which Redding. For those of you who don't know, it's like a long distance 3D shoot. Shoot, I gotta turn that heater off because it's so loud. And it already is warm in here. And with that, we have a new bow. Oh, I did do something special on this bow. We got white limbs. So three, 3D season is upon, upon us, like I was saying. Redding is a long distance 3D shoot. It's 100 yards to like four yards. So with that, as I wanted to get a 70 pound bow, this is a 70 pound TRX 36. Um, we got white lambs, black riser, yellow strings. I kind of like that. What do you think? Uh, it's sharp. I, kinda, I was wondering if, uh... oh yeah. But what we're gonna do today is we're gonna set this up to basically like a field bow setup. What I'm gonna be running this year, start to finish. We might even get a sight tape on it. Um, so I'm gonna get all the goodies together for this. We're gonna bolt them on and get right in the process. Okay, so we're gonna just run through what we're actually gonna be putting on this bow real quick. Starting off, we're gonna try uh, the Matthews QED Ultra Rest. I haven't shot a blade in a while, but I think I'm gonna force myself to shoot one just to get familiar with it. Um, we have, of course, a B-Real Grip from Ultra View. Uh, we have a adjustable V-Bar Matthews Genuine Shrewd V-Bar Adapter. We have a Hamski Peep Sight and a Hamski Kit. And we have an UltraView Scope, but I'm kind of Frankensteining it. I have a lens system set up. I have uh, the metal housing and then I have dock kits in the, in the front part of housing. Um, so we're gonna kind of Skeletor that. We have some Shrewd Brevex Stabilizers. And I'm also going to try out for this build is some victory arrows, some skinnies. Um, we're just going to, I'm going to see how those shoot with some boning air veins on those. So um, we're going to get that all rock and roll. And so step one, you know how I rock and roll every single time. You got to start with the grip. Take this off. Peels off super easy, but you're left with this excess stickiness. And you have to get all of that stickiness off. So there we go, completely bare, no stickiness on it. And now we can take out our B-Real grip. Oh, hey, look, long time no see, friend. Yes, I sign every single one of these stinking cards. So you better appreciate that if you get a B-Real grip. Literally takes up a lot of time. B-Real grip, stick it on. Boom, fully installed, no tape, no nothing necessary, it's just friction fit. Now, let's go ahead, we'll open up. Let's do this side stabilizer mount. Got that, pull the package out. Unlock all of the goodies, the bolts, all the fun stuff. So we do have, let's see, we are going to use this guy. And I always mount it on this lower mount that comes on the Matthews, pretty standard. I don't normally come off of the front here where the front stabilizer is. 
always pretty much run on the back. Kind of a personal preference, but it, um, I think it mounts better down here by itself and you're not messing around with trying to mount both front and rear stabilizers to the front, the front bushing. So we're just gonna get this snug tight. Oh. There is a flat side and a rounded side on this. One's meant for Matthew specifically, and that's the flat side. So make sure the flat side is against the riser to help it from bumping out a snug or anything. Let's grab. Somehow, you can never keep Allen wrenches around. I'm the right size, isn't it? Okay, so we're gonna loosen this. And when you install it on the Matthews, it comes, if you, if you put it in flat against the riser like I was just talking about, all you have to do is loosen this and that flips down. So now that's in the right spot. And I always start, I put it about at four, four degrees downward. So I'm just gonna roughly put that, you can see that little dash mark is at four degrees right there. And then we're just gonna snug that slightly. And then I need this Allen wrench to fit in here. Everything's just loose so I can work on it. I put this one at four also. It's kind of like four and four. It's a good starting point for me. It's all personal preference though. I'll just get these kind of snug. Nothing crazy. We'll we'll make sure it's really snug um, when we go through like the final everything. Okay, that is on. Now what we need is a degree down. We're just gonna take it off with 33 because I don't shoot this ball a whole lot, so I'll have to get get another one for it when I need to shoot it. important that when you use a degree down that it's lined up because if it's not lined up your stabilizer can kick off to the left kick off to the right give you some weird balance things you can actually mess around with that if you want to get a different feel but starting off straight up and down is a good starting point for that very nice next what we're gonna need is a sight bracket mount which I don't know if I have one of those either Yes, I do, right there. Do I have the screws for it? We're just cannibalizing bows today. Actually, as you guys see, I get this comment a lot, but these were uh, last year and the year before models and they just sit on the wall. And I've been really thinking we should do some sort of giveaway. Let me know if you want me to do a bow giveaway in the comments below and what the bow giveaway should be, how to win it. Let me know your thoughts. <laughs> Bubble wrap. Dude, you jumped on that. <laughs> okay, this, this bolt here. Really simple, all this stuff is just kinda, you bolt it in, no, no skill involved, as long as you know how to use an Allen wrench. Okay, so let's clean up a bit. Let's get all the stuff we're done using out the way. So this is the site. It's a really older site. I've had it for a long time. Just It's an Excel Achieve carbon bar, not the XP, just the carbon. It'll mount right to the bow. There's no through like the V3 axis. It has to mount right to the side. Um, I am gonna use a six power lens, just a little green dot in there is what I'm gonna start out with. So, okay, so we have our full scope, but we need to attach it to this, and I need a uh, scope rod thing. Okay, so to install the scope rod, all I need to do is take this out we have just an excel scope rod we don't have the ultra b1 we are going to thread this through thread this through 
I'm gonna stick my finger on the scope side, use the little nut, maybe. We're gonna tighten it down. And you're gonna take a pair of pliers or a little tiny wrench like this. And we're just gonna tighten her down. Bada bing, bada boom. Put the cartridge back in. Tighten the set screw back down. And then we have this little deal, which looks weird when it's taken all apart off of it, but we're gonna loosen it up. Slip the scope rod on. We're just gonna tighten it down for the meantime. But then we're gonna take our scope and our sight and bam, we have a full setup sight ready for this bow. So we're gonna put it on this bow now. One step closer. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna open up the rest. Um, and all we really have to do is bolt it on right now. This is the QAD I did an unboxing on it. If you wanna check out more about it, you can check out the unboxing. But it is kinda of cool, it comes with different blades. So 12 thousandths medium, 8 thousandths medium, and I think the 10 thousandths is on it right now. I'm just gonna lay those like that. And you get some handy dandy screws, or not screws, Allen wrenches, because you can never have enough Allen wrenches. This rest comes with these two little plugs right here. And those actually, a lot of people don't know this, but those are meant to go in the little screw holes right here. So that looks way cleaner. It probably serves some vibration dampening, but it kind of looks clean without the shininess. Cause on this side, it's all painted in black. So it adds to it because this QED clips right to the back there. So let's go ahead and get this installed. Let's see, what are we looking at right here? Wow, I got confused. So we're gonna loosen this. So that that can clamp on. Then we're gonna take this really small Allen wrench that they supplied us. And this screw right here, all you have to do is, you don't have to take this one out. You just have to loosen it a good bit because you're going to clamp this. Let's put the bow in the vise real quick. So this is, their target setup is just like the hunting setup. And there's a little dash. You line up the dash in the riser with the dash in the, in the rest. The dash in the riser lines up with the dash on the rest. Wow, say that 10 times fast. Boom, so that little tiny set screw puts it in place. Then you come in with big hoss and you really tighten her down. So you can see that that little line right there, can you see that right? That little line is lined up with the riser. And now come in here with big hoss to tighten it down. So right now, this dude is technically at zero. So we should be pretty close in our tune, hopefully. Um, there's, today we're gonna do a pretty basic tune. There'll be some, some more stuff, especially in a target setup that we'll do. But that is pretty much standard, ready to rip. So we are going to come over to the bow press. Like I was saying, we have our arrows already right here. So I'm gonna keep one of these. We're gonna install our um, D loop our knocking point. We're gonna put it in our peep sight. We're gonna get kind of bare level ish. Then we're gonna third axis our sight. Show you guys all of that. We're doing a full setup on this dude. I want to be shooting 20 yards to 80 yards today. Might get a sight tape, might not, but I definitely want to be able to shoot that far. Okay. 
So we're gonna install our peep sight first. Sometimes I forget to do this first, but it is good to do first. Um, Matthews always has this little string divider. I know if you have a multi-string, it's normally split in half, but they always install this divider if you have a single uh, color in your string so you know where true center is. I'm gonna put that in there and I am going to use a little cheat sheet for my peep sight since these bows are the same. I know roughly where to put my new one. My old peep is on top, my new one is on the bottom. So it'll be about right there. And that will be adjusted, especially this is my ASA bow, which is like 20 yards to 50 yards. This bow is will be the most versatile bow you'll ever need to shoot as setup wise. Four yards to 100 yards you'll be able to shoot super accurately so the peep sight might change a little bit like this one i'll have the peeps, peep sight be comfortable at like 40 yards or this one it might be more 45 50 because there are a lot longer shots um because you want to set your peep sight kind of in the middle because believe it or not your anchor actually moves if you change your distance when shooting a single pin slider even a even a multi uh pin sight like this and you line up your different peep sights depending on if you line up the pin with the middle of your peeps or the whole housing with the middle of your peep. But if you're shooting a single pin slider, your anchor changes slightly up and down as you're looking through the peep or looking down at the peep as your sight goes up and down. So you wanna find the middle ground to set up your peep sight for like how it feels in the middle. So it's typically around 45 yards, but the ASA bow, your, your, your money maker shots or your most shots are like 40, 45 yards. So knock fit is really important. Um, and depends on what sort of knocks you get. Some knocks work with these stock strings, some don't. Most of them do, most hunting ones do. Um, that's actually not that bad. So a quick rule, if you're, if you're like, have your bow like this, if you just take your fingers, like it's not popping off, but there, I just had a little more pressure. So you can see, and this is, this is kind of a pro trick, I guess, a lot of, a lot of people know this, but if you just pull on it slightly and it pops off. See, we're kinda, or right on the edge, Right on the edge of it being a little too tight, but I think as it flattens and as we shoot a little bit, it'll be better. Let me find, go through some examples here. Like that one's tight. Like this one's really tight on it and it's not popping off. Like I had to put some pretty good pressure. But then like this knock, that's not that bad. That popped, that popped right off. So it depends on the knock. Like you have to go through, you have to test if you're being really, really picky and like knock pinch is really important for accuracy at like a far, you know, if you're shooting far, really, really precise about it. But the different thickness of strand, this is kind of, if you're a beginner level, different thickness of this serving material, you can see that these two serving materials are different thicknesses. So if you wrap your serving in different thicknesses, you're gonna get different diameters, different knock fit, all that jazz. Going back, we are confirming that this knock fit is good enough for now, and I think it'll get even better as this serving gets smashed down. Just over time with shooting, you know, the first couple hundred arrows. We need this. We need this. We're gonna get the bow level, just the string. The string with the earth. Don't really care about anything else. There we go, string is level with the earth. Now we're gonna come through here. Our, our rest is already set at zero. Stuck at like, stuck, stuck, started. At stock zero, wow. It's at stock zero, so if we can just find where the arrow is level, then we'll go ahead and do our little ties. It's actually coming through at the bottom of the burger hole how this is. So I'm probably gonna want, I like to go through the middle, middle to the top of the burger hole. I'll try that. 
We have our top tie right now. So I'm just gonna take this arrow, clip it down on the side, get it out of the way, take that off. So we've marked our top location. I'm just gonna do, just gonna do two, two knots on this. It is a little bit smaller knock, it's a smaller arrow. Do a square knot to finish it off. Take our arrow to find the right knock fit in there. There we go, we got our knocks. Our knock marks in. We'll burn these dudes off. Tyner D loop, and we're really close to shooting. Just got a couple more things we gotta do. I'll sharpen my knife. Get it hand tight and uh, we'll really cinch it down with the pliers at the end. Okay. Wow, how many times am I gonna drop this arrow? So we got our two burned ends. And I don't like to smash them down. I like to keep them kind of just rounded. I feel like they're strongest when they're like that. We'll get this, we'll grab some pliers. So you wanna make sure that your ends are kind of pushed in there and tight, that there's, you know, over time, they're not gonna move on you, that they're already pushed all the way in. Then we're gonna take our pliers, or our special d -loop pliers. Let's give it a good snug. There we go, we're gonna double check our knock fit. Good, a little bit of slop, because I do like just about one strand of serving thickness of slop. Just cause when you go to draw back, it pinches down and pinches on the knock. And there we go. I'm gonna tie in my peep sight real quick, just once around. I'm not gonna get it finalized right now. I'll finalize the location when I actually, when I actually know that it's gonna stay right here, but I do know that this is roughly the position. Okay. One step closer, now what we're gonna do is we are going to third axis our sight. Okay, here we are, third axis jig. This gives you just a really good start at your third axis. You can do more, you can do less, but this is a good start. So what you do is you get this jig all lined up and then, oh, there's no bubble in this sight. Nice, because it is a raw, um, a raw new one, hold on. Need a level, need a level. It is really easy to swap your levels out um, if you wanted a different color. We do offer different colors in these. Slide it in and then just a set screw gently touches the bottom. Okay. So we are off. So now what you have to do for your second axis is come on down here, loosen these two in the back door. So you kind of just keep this semi-tight, but just enough to where you can just bump it and it moves just a little bit. And then you can come in and just tighten it down a little bit at a time. It's kind of a kind of a pain in the butt, really, dealing with this. It's close. OK. 
Okay, that's really close. Now we'll do our third axis. You just tip it up at a 45 degree angle and that is off slightly. So now we go to our third axis, which is right here. We'll loosen that up just a touch. And now this moves this way. So this is your third axis adjustment. That's actually right. Boom. And boom. Next, what you want to do too, especially sometimes you can get away with it a little bit for the, some of the target or some of the hunting sites. But for target, what you want to make sure is that your overall um, like sight mark bracket is good and that that is level because if this is not level, then everything is off. Which I did that completely backwards because as you can see, that is not level, yay. So I did that backwards. So let's fix that. I'm gonna have to redo my second a little bit, probably redo my third a little bit. But if this, if the main sight bar is crooked one way or another, as you move your, your distance, it's gonna swing one way or swing the other way. If you do any sort of walk back tuning, you're gonna be just running around in circles, not knowing that the actual problem is in your sight. So we're gonna fix that, run back through a second, run back through a third and get this first. That's step one, then step two is second, then step three is third, in that order. Okay. Second really isn't off too much, but it is. Okay, that is definitely a pain in the butt. Second and third axis is just so tedious, but I think we got it. Um, and we should be good right there. So now what you can do is you can do some full draw test, um, which I will do. You hang you hang like that string if you watch my other videos on the Hamsky third axis leveling. You swing that down, you come to full draw, you come down, you line up the rod, go up, you go in the middle and you just double check everything and there might be some some slight tweaks on that. It was loud. Now comes the fun part. Um, this bow should be at 28 inches, 20 and a half inches, but we're gonna go ahead and shoot it through paper and see how bad it is. State of the art paper tuner holder here. So we're just gonna start up close, see where we're at. There we go. Gotta love shooting a blade. Yikes. So we are off. Raise it up, move it to the left, see where we're at. We might have to completely. One thing we will have to change, I will have to get that I don't have, is this is the medium blade. So it's essentially the, the, the wideness of the lizard tongue. With these arrows, I for sure am gonna want the small ones, but for now, it'll be okay. We'll probably just ride on the fletchings a little bit. Much closer, okay. <clears throat> so we'll just need to bump it a little bit to the right and a little bit up and we'll be right there. Okay, so we shot one, two, three, four more times off camera. We actually moved this, the D loop down a little bit because I guess I didn't really know this, but that line on the Matthews, I don't think works 100% with this to make it zero. So we actually had to bump it up a little bit, bump the D-loop down a little bit. So there's, there might be a little bit of fine tuning in this process, but we're close. We're gonna see if the final adjustments we made will make a bullet. Pretty dang close. There we are right there. We just did that one. So I moved it just a couple clicks, got that. So I think we're gonna run that we're gonna put stabilizers on and we're gonna get a 20 yard mark. Go from there. 
kind of feels good that we're switching gears to outdoor season. Kind of excited. We are going to Redding this year. Did not go to Redding last year. Redding's always a fun shoot, so I'm excited to go back. Um, actually, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get a rough mark here inside before going outside so I don't launch an arrow into the lawn. That would probably be a smart move. The right around your eight and 10 yard mark is actually pretty close to your 20 yard mark. So I always like to get sighted in here first. What I'm also going to do is, I forgot I wanted to do this, but the Hamsky kit I wanted to put in a yellow clarifier. So right now I don't have anything in, and it's super blurry. And with this 3D stuff, even though what I will be shooting, it'll have a big orange dot on the thing that we're gonna wanna shoot, it would be nice to have a little bit of clarity in it. And uh, this A-class A lens, which is the yellow lens, right there. That one actually provides a little bit of clarity, but not crystal clear for most people. So we'll put that in um, just so it'll clear up the, the image a little bit. And um, that clears it up because we are running magnification in our scopes. So I'm running a six power lens. Make sure it looks good in there. I'm running a six power lens, so to help counter the clarity, right? Isn't that how it works? To like counter that six power, you have to put a clarifier in to make it clear. So let's pull these, let's shoot again, get in the middle, and we'll shoot us out. Boom, check that out, right in the middle. Okay. So now, let's see how far this target is. Nice, all tangled up. Twenty yards. Let's go. Okay, so I'm like three inches high, which is not bad at all. You can hear that buzz from the lizard tongue. Not used to that. Nice, okay. So now what we're gonna do is I think I'm just gonna work back. I wanna shoot some distance. So I might work back to 50 yards or so and see just like what type of three arrow group I can get. Okay, so our sight is just about adjusted for 50 yards out there. So I'm gonna go pull them and then we're gonna see just maybe how good of a group we can get. If we can get all three of them inside that little black dot down there, that'd be a very successful first day. All right. Let's see if we can do it. Three in the black little circle down there. Nope, we're good. Just caught it on the top side. Okay, that one might go out. That one's out. 
just barely off the top right. It's good though. What is gonna take me some time, I don't have to shoot a lot, but this 70 pounds is kind of like rough. <laughs> 70 pounds and it's a 75% uh, mods on it. So I don't know what that equates to holding weight, but pretty decent amount. 17 pounds. Is it? Wow, I can tell I'm just shaky. Two out of three again. Not that bad. It, it, it's a group about like that down there. So that is group number two being sighted in. Two in the dot, one just barely outside. All right guys, well that is the end of today's bow build. Building a TRX 36 white limbs, black riser, yellow strings. The sight, the whole nine yards, pretty much what I put on my outdoor setup. A couple new things. Um, I do still have to switch out to the smaller blade, but pretty successful bow build. It's gonna be a lot of fine tuning still in this like next month, just like a little bit of group tuning, probably like I'll spend a half a day and do some walk back tuning and stuff. It's definitely spend some time setting up a sight tape, but pretty much it. Hope you guys learned a thing or two. Hope you enjoyed today's video and we will catch you in the next one. Thanks so much. See you later.